Welcome campers. In today's video, I'll be giving you an introduction to our overland trailer build, our plans for the trailer, and also installing our receiver tube and hitch. Stay tuned. The dimensions of the trailer is six feet long by four feet wide. It is made out of two inch by two inch square steel tubing. That's one eighth inch wall thickness. We went with a leaf spring setup because it's a little bit cheaper and heavy duty. And the wheel mounting surface on the axle is 58 inches, just like the front and rear axle on the Jeep, along with a five by four and a half bolt pattern, which is the same as the Cherokee as well. Since the width of the trailer is four feet and it's a 58 inch wheel mounting surface on the axle, we had to go with two inch wheel spacers to clear the wheels and tires that are gonna go on it. And we're gonna go with the same wheels on the trailer as the Jeep. And we're gonna do 33 inch tires just like on the Jeep. Our design of the trailer is gonna be based on longer trips, either around the state or to other states. We do want to do like a tankless hot water heater set up on it along with a fresh water tank for showers and dishes. And we do want to carry a couple things. We do have some in the works, um, a certain toy that uh, we are getting rebuilt right now that will be the perfect, the trailer will be the perfect size for that toy. So once that toy is up and running, I will uh, make a video about it and show it off to you guys. Our plan is to have some walls on it, about 18 inches high, to hold some of our gear in it. And then we do want to do a rack setup on it so we could take the rooftop tent off the roof of the Jeep and put it on the trailer so we could have a base camp to either go hit trails or go rock crawling or just go explore. So the reason why we went with a six foot long by four foot wide trailer is so it's a lot more nimble on the trails and we kind of wanted to keep the weight down but also have it heavy duty. And with the four feet wide with the rack, it should be a little bit wider than our tent. So if the trailer ev ever did take a spill onto its side, the rack would be taking the damage and not our rooftop tent or any of our gear inside. On each of the leaf spring brackets, I do have some support gussets on there. I think it'll look kind of cool with the, uh, the spider webs. They are a 3 16 inch thick steel. So it'll definitely be more than enough support for our leaf spring brackets. So on the trailer, I went with a 48 inch receiver tube so I can easily jackknife the trailer and the Jeep on a trail to either turn around or at our campsite turn around. And then I did go with the Pintle setup just because of how strong it is. And I do like that there is only a certain amount of articulation between the ring and the hitch. So your trailer wouldn't roll on the trail if you got some really off camber and weird. I do have the lock for the lunette ring so no one could steal it from my house or at the camp spot or anything. And then I do have the locks to secure the lunette ring to the, to the receiver tube and the, the mount to the vehicle. I did get everything off of Amazon, so I will leave links in the description below if you guys do choose this setup. If you guys are interested in me making the trailer build a series on our YouTube channel, just let me know in the comments. So the width of the trailer is 47 and a half inches wide, and I have a two and a half inch wide receiver. So my plan is to cut this tube to slide the receiver in there so I could have strong welds on each side and on the end of this tube. So with this being two and a half inches and the trailer being 47 and a half inches wide, I'll cut two and a half inches for the tube that'll be in the center off of the trailer. So my width is 47 inches total that I have to measure. With the 47 inches, if I half that, it's 23 and a half. So if I measure 23 and a half from each side, it should leave me with two and a half inches in the center so I can put the receiver tube in there and it should be able to fit with no issues so I could tack weld it on to these tubes and onto this crossbar.
So I do have the 23 and a half measurements. Now we'll measure this. And that is two and a half inches. So that should work out. I will double check. You always double and triple check your measurements. That's 23 and a half. And that is 23 and a half. It's right outside of 23 and a half. So I'll have to fix that. But with both of those being 23 and a half, it should work out perfect. Or I might have to just do a little bit of trimming with the, the grinder to make this receiver tube fit in there. And I'll tack weld it on. But before I do that, I'll do some measurements on the Jeep so I can make sure with this distance between these tubes, with me welding it in there, I could still fully jackknife the Jeep and the trailer without the edge of the trailer slamming into the Jeep. So my plan now is to kind of simulate the length of the trailer when it's hooked up to the receiver tube or when it's welded and mounted onto the receiver tube. So I'm gonna measure from the face of this crossbar to the very front of the trailer, which is 16 inches. And I'm gonna mark that on the receiver tube. So when I put the hitch, the pintle hitch into the Jeep and the receiver tube with the lunette ring onto the, the hitch, I can simulate me jackknifing the trailer to see if it all fits correct. Or if I have, or if I'm too deep into the trailer and have to add an extra crossbar to help support that hitch. So since I have the pintle mount set up now, or the pintle hitch, I'll put the lunette ring in there, lock it down, and then I'll jackknife the, the tube just to see if it'll, if it'll fit. And by how it looks, it looks like it does because my, my line is right there. So I would be able to fully 90 degree jackknife the trailer without having any problems. So since it all uh, lines up perfect now with no issues, let's get back to the trailer chop up the frame and get this receiver tube welded on. So since we double checked everything and now we know that the receiver tube lines up with the measurements on the trailer and with the mount on the Jeep, let's get to prepping the trailer. We'll cut the frame of the trailer, hit everything else with the grinder to clean it up so we have a good surface to weld on and we'll be good to go. So since I took off the Sharpie measurements with the grinder to prep it. I'll re-measure it and remark it. And then from there, I will uh, take the cutting wheel on the grinder and just either score them so I could easily get the sawzall blade in there to cut it, or I'll just completely mark all around it and just cut it with the grinder, with the cutting wheel all together. Honestly, I think cutting it with the grinding wheel might be the best bet. It might be the, it'll be the straightest cut. So I think that's the route we're gonna go. So I took the speed square and the Sharpie and I marked it all the way around. So then I'll just take the grinder and just cut it up here and then cut it on the sides and then cut it underneath and you know, just all around it to try to make it as clean of a cut as possible. After about 10 minutes with the grinder, just uh, trimming the, in, the inner tubes, we were able to get the receiver in there with no issues. Now it's just some fine tuning just to make sure it's uh, nice and flat up top because I'm gonna be doing a, a top plate with uh, I think 16 gauge steel. And then I'll line it up back here. Once it's fully lined up and it's looking good, I will tack weld it in a few spots and then i will get in there to uh to fully weld it in i'm gonna do it in spurts i'm gonna i have this all lined up and ready to go so i'm gonna tack weld it in a few spots to hold it in place and then from here i will move up to the front 
and get it all lined up perfect and, and everything looking good and then I'll weld it in up here because it's a uh, it's way too hard to try to get it lined up perfect back here and then get it lined up perfect up here so it's it's perfectly in line it's just a matter of getting these level since I will be doing a a deck of a uh, 16 gauge steel up top by no means am I a professional welder. I'm just happy uh, I could get penetration on these so they will be uh, pretty bomb proof on the trail unless I decide to you know send it and jump it or something but they should be uh, pretty good for pretty much everything we do on the trail. All right so I got about 80% of it welded in pretty much the top and the sides on both of them and uh, all I need is the bottom welded, but I am going to clean it up with a grinder and then I'll hold off welding the bottom part of the tube for another day. But it all is winding up great and uh, I think it was a good idea to chop the tube in the center and put the and then weld it to this crossbar. I think it's going to be plenty strong and if not I can always do other crossbars from the frame rails to the receiver tube. But honestly, for what we do, I think this is plenty strong. So I guess I didn't weld it too quick because uh, it does look pretty straight. Nothing looks warped and weird. But uh, I am extremely happy with how it came out. So that's about all for the video guys. I just want to give you guys an overview of what we've done to the trailer so far and what we've built it with and the dimensions, uh, our plans with the trailer and our use for it and how to install that receiver hitch. So I really appreciate you guys, everyone liking and subscribing. And if you guys do have any critiques, questions, want to roast me on my welds, just comment down below and please like and subscribe and watch some of our future videos. Bye.